Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Maryland Business Roundtable for Education's What Next series with our Way to Be at Home programs. Today, we are going to talk all things agriculture. And I, before we start, I'd like to apologize for delays. In this modern world of technology, we are at the technology's, uh, how shall we say, mercy? And we do what we can to bring you the best programming that we can. Today we are going to be talking about all things agriculture and careers in agriculture. And I have a special guest today. Her name is Terry Neuer. She is the Case and Agricultural Science teacher at Dorchester Career and Technology Center. We all call it DCTC. And I'm going to ask her to tell us all about careers, what we would do about going to get a career. And I'm going to start by introducing Terry. Good morning, Terry. How are you today? Good morning, Laurie. It's nice to be here. It's nice to finally connect with you. I'm so <laughs> fortunate that you were able to make this happen for us. Thank you. Yes, when technology works, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start at the beginning. I mentioned we were going to be talking about careers in agriculture. Before we get there, though, I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I am a mom. I'm an agriculture teacher, FFA, and Barathon advisor. I love horses, I love gardening, so it's all kind of up my alley. <laughs> so did, is this something you always wanted to do when you were younger? No, teaching was not anywhere on my universe. Um, when I told my dad I was gonna interview as a teacher, he fell off of his chair laughing. That's <laughs> how uncharacteristic it was, but here I am 21 years later. I came out of industry, so. So you were in industry, you came into teaching, and what made you fall into teaching agriculture science, if you will? Well, I my career was spent with uh, the poultry industry, all phases of it, with agronomy, working with crops and farmers. And I was in between jobs at the time, and a former teacher came to me and said, hey, I need an agriculture teacher in Delaware. So, and that wow. started it. <laughs> so you've done other things in agriculture? Yes. What are some of the things you've done? Well, I grew up on a poultry farm, so helping to manage that. Um, I worked for a chemical company called FMC out in Omaha, Nebraska, right out of college, uh, doing nation nationwide sales and marketing. Um, came back to um, the Eastern Shore and at that point started, uh, again, working back on the farm, but also working in the poultry industry again in sales, um, product, new product developments. Um, graduated from there to go on to uh, working in, as an agronomist in the fields around Dorchester County and all of Delmarva looking at pests and nutrients and crop health and things like that. That sounds like quite a career. It was. A lot of different things that you were able to do. And, because, and that's going to lead us into what I was going to ask mm -hmm. next. I'm a Pittsburgh girl, born and raised. Believe black <laughs> And when I thought of agriculture, the first thing I think of is farming. Yes. And it's a very singular thought for me. It's big fields, it's mm -hmm. corn stalks, it's, you know, I don't think about other careers in agriculture. And no, you not everybody has the money to buy a whole huge parcel of land. Not everybody wants to shovel poop. And <laughs> not everybody knows how to work at, you know, how to repair diesel engines. So yeah, that the that's this much of agriculture that, you know, the, the, the breadth of, Careers is amazing. So. so why don't we go right into that then? Sure. What are some um, other fields that you can? I know I've got a list that we talked about the other day. Sure, sure. Can you share some of those with us? Um, well, if you're more of an indoor person, um, food science, uh, food chemistry, uh, developing new food products is a quite a quite a um, an industry in and of itself. Every time you walk through Walmart, uh, everything is being decided on how what you're going to buy just by product placement and design. Uh, it's very indoors, it's people oriented, food oriented, but it requires a, a knowledge of psychology, how ingredients function in food and the anatomy of the brain and mouth combination. Um, requires a bachelor's degree to normally get into there. Um, another one, uh, another uh, indoor one kind of sort of is veterinary technician. Uh, vet assistant, um, working as a poultry veterinarian. Um, again, you're working with animal health. You're making sure that the quality of an animal's life is as high as possible, whether it be a production animal or a companion animal. So, and that you can go anywhere from a certificate on up. 
and you mentioned um, soil chemistry. Yes, soil and you want to work on if you want to work outdoors. Um, things like working with the soil conservation district. Um, they are responsible for maintaining the quality and health of our soils, which of course is the basis of everything we do. <laughs> and um, that works you're working outdoors you're working with farmers doing soil testing looking at um the geology or the geography of the land to see what's what are the best management practices to keep the soil healthy and in place <clears throat> excuse me another outdoor one so uh becoming a small farmer not every farmer has to have thousands of acres you can have a small farmette on two acres or less there is a, a famous uh, post now about a farm or a homeowner in Los Angeles who on a half an acre of ground grows enough food for himself and the community. Wow. <laughs> and that's, so. But that's great. That's that farm to table. Yes. And it's also meeting the needs for local, uh, local uh, culture. You know, maybe there's a certain vegetable, a certain type of fruit, a certain type of uh, goat or uh, chicken that people want to have locally that a, a big producer can't necessarily find. Wow. So. That, that's, you know, I'm hearing two ways you can go in agriculture. You you can have that job that's in the climate co controlled yeah. environment. And, yeah. <laughs> Very little sweat and dirt involved. Yes, yes. Or it sounds like there's a whole realm of careers in which, you know, there's a lot of people that love being outdoors and love getting dirty and, and sweating and working the earth. Yes. So there are some yes. in the earth. It, and, and that's just it. You know, agriculture offers a career for just about any type of interest level. Um, even if you don't like working with people, you don't have to. If you don't like working with animals, you don't have to. But it's open to a variety of things because everything kind of integrates into our lives from agriculture. So what would you say to somebody who's listening to this saying, you know, maybe I want indoors, maybe I want outdoors. How, how do I go about figuring it all out? Where's the beginning? Well, first identify what you want to do. If you have a CTE program available to you in your district, um, Look at what the offerings are. See if you can go shadow in each of the classrooms. Um, start also looking, you know, from a school perspective, that's where you start if you're in ninth or 10th grade. Mm -hmm. um, if you are a little further along, um, try to go out and get some experience working with maybe even just shadowing for a day at a business where you think you'd like to do something. Um, if you want, if you're interested in animals, maybe see if you can go work on a farm for a day or at a veterinarian's office or a dog trainer. Um, if you're into plants, see if you can work at a greenhouse for the day or with food science, go to a poultry company or some kind of a processor in your area. So it's going out and, and you have to go out and search out the experiences. The biggest thing is find what you don't like versus what you do like, because you'd hate to go through whatever education in high school and after and find out you really don't like it. <laughs> I agree with that. I really do. Sometimes it's better, even if you don't know what you like. Yes. You know what you don't like. Yeah. Yes. In this direction. You should find passion in what you do. And that is something I hope every student gets to do. Um, because if you love what you do, they say you never work a day in your life. Well, you don't work most days. How's that sound? <laughs> that is something I've told my students as well over the years. Yes. If you like what you do, it, it's not as difficult. It, yeah. it, Gives you a sense of fulfillment as well. Completely. Yeah. When we were talking the other day, you, you gave me a term that found really interesting. You said students that want to go into this might want to become a generalist. Yes. Can you explain a little um, bit about that? Sure. A lot of times when you go into a field, not no pun intended there, <laughs> um, you can choose, let's look at medicine. You can choose to be a general family doctor, or you can choose to do surgery or eye doctor or tooth doctor, mm -hmm. dentist, uh, you know, something like that. In agriculture, you're going to find that most companies are actually going to want you to know a lot about a lot of things um, and not as much specializing on one focus. Um, for example, if you, if you wanted to work with animals, it's really good to understand how animals in general work 
how they behave, how to handle them, the psychology of them, mm -hmm. um, versus just focusing on a dog or a cat. <clears throat> if you wanted to work on with food, um, maybe you know knowing more about like how th different things are processed um, versus um, knowing just uh, again about meats or vegetables or things like that. So um, I find that a lot of companies are more willing to train you in what they need you to specialize in if you've got a good base to start with. So. Very good. Okay. So they found out what they don't like. Mm -hmm. They have explored some things that they do like. We mentioned the CTE programs. You did mention earlier that, yes, for something like food science, you would need a bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure there are plenty that don't need the oh, bachelor's yeah, degree. Yeah. Are they trade schools? Are they apprenticeships? Are they certificates? Oh, um, you <laughs> little as a student, you can actually begin uh, some certification programs through dual enrollment with your local community college. You can also do independent study things, such as uh, there is a vet tech science um, or a vet tech certificate out of, say, Texas A&M, where you can go online and do that. Um, you can, in food science, you could become a serve safe food manager. Um, that, again, it's a, it's a series of classes and you go through and you study and you take an exam. Um, so you can start right away. You don't have to wait. But the other thing would be to start looking at what programs are available either near you or somewhere where you may want to move to. Um, looking at apprenticeships, you can look through your community colleges. You can look at locally. We can look at Chesapeake College. We have Dell Tech over in Georgetown, um, University of Delaware, University of Maryland. Uh, UMES alone has a very, very interesting um, agricultural sciences department with a lot of really good stuff going on. Um, so yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of things. You can also, if you don't want to go to college, that's not your thing, that's great. You know, there are apprenticeships, there are internships. Um, you can go out and get the experience you want to but you've got to put that together. Now, but nobody's going to do that for you for the most part. Right. Exactly. There has to be a little bit of self-motivation there to go out and find what yes. you want. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Very nice. Um, we had mentioned that, you know, some people get dirty. Some people don't want to. There are plenty of options available. We talked about how to get started in the field. We talked about all the different options. What advice would you have for students now? We just talked about being self-motivated. But what any little last advice would you have for students that are thinking about this? Sure. Uh, one of the most valuable things I think you can do to be a future employee mm -hmm. is to learn to present yourself professionally. Um, when you're home, you act one way. But when you're in the business world, you must dress professionally, act professionally, even speak professionally. Um, public speaking was a huge thing for me. Um, also, learning, um, practicing interview skills, your writing skills, um, your, even building up your vocabulary. But more importantly, take responsibility for your choices. Don't, don't uh, finish a job and then just sit down. Look for more things to do. That people, employers want that. They want people who are on time, mm -hmm. who are responsible, and who are willing to do more than they are asked. So practice the walk, practice the talk, and go out and push your comfort zone to find out what you really want to do with your life. It, it doesn't necessarily come naturally. No. It, and by the way, what you think you want to do now and start out doing, it may change. Look at me. I'm a teacher. Who'd have thunk? <laughs> <laughs> and a very good one, I might add. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but thank you. <laughs> Well, Terry, it's been a real pleasure having you today. You've given us a wealth of information about mm -hmm. agricultural fields, and I'm sure our students and students across the state will benefit from what you had to share with us today. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. It's one of my passions, so. it's That's apparent. I can see it in your face. So you're very excited about what you do, and I'm sure that translates to your students as well. I hope so. <laughs> well, I'd like to thank everybody from MBRT to for joining us today. I would also like to remind you to download our app 
You can find out all the things you might be interested in or not be interested in as you're planning for your career after high school. It's the Way to Be app. You can get it in your app store. And I'd like to see if you can tune in again tomorrow with me on College Tell with Mrs. Bell, where we're going to be talking about non-credited healthcare careers. And one of them is the vet tech that Terry was just talking about. So join me again tomorrow at 11. Thank you again, Terry. And, I hope, you. and I hope you have a wonderful day. We will. Thank you.